It's a chilly Thursday at 2 p.m. and you know what that means. It's week seven of our fall 2020 update. It is an absolutely beautiful fall day and Shenandoah National Park has been beautiful this entire time we've been out here. Definitely. Make sure you stay tuned for some pictures uh, at the end of this video that have been taken this week here in the park. Yeah, and if you have any questions during this video, please put those in the comments below. And we are going to bring you a peak check and you're going to also see some of our pictures on our website, our social media pages, and make sure that you still share the pictures with us on our Facebook or Instagram page. Um, so we're actually going to do our peak check now. Yep. Check out and, that mountain. Yeah, as you can see on Neighbor Mountain, uh, there's a lot of leaf drop in the higher elevations, and then as you drop to those lower elevations, there's still a lot of color, and that's true for most of the park, since it is about 100 miles long. Um, there's still autumn views all around, expansive views actually because of the leaf drop. And we did experience uh, more leaf drop this past weekend and probably today because of all of the wind that we are having right now because we're moving into that perfect fall weather. It's the crisp weather, the clear skies. Um, it's pretty comfortable to go hiking now and you can still see some color in those areas and then there's, it's great for wildlife viewing. So we still invite you guys to come and we actually have a little bit um, warmer this weekend, uh, 60s. Uh, it's a little bit cooler up here than it is in the valley so make sure that you are prepared for your hike and wear layers. That's really important especially when these colder temps uh, drop in the afternoon and the uh, evening. So You know you were talking about that crisp air and it is definitely wonderful to hike on a day like that but also at night that crisp air gives a beautiful view of the night sky. The humidity is gone so you mm -hmm. can see a lot more clearly and I've talked about it before here in Shenandoah National Park the night skies are some of the best you can see in all of the East Coast as long as it's not too windy. Um, <laughs> But the planets are actually aligned right now. They're all kind of on the same side of the sun. And so if you go out um, past <laughs> sunset, we're going to try to get through this wind. Right after sunset, which is easy to do because it's at like 5 o'clock, you know, with daylight savings and the shorter days, you can look east and you can see a big bright red star in the sky, and that's Mars. And then if you look towards the <laughs> south, you can see Jupiter and Saturn right next to each other in the sky. And that's really amazing to be able to see those two planets. They're really close to each other. And one thing that's really cool is they are on their way to conjunction. And that means they're actually going to appear to be one star. Again, it's a planet, but it looks like a star in the night sky. They haven't been this close since the year 1623. So that's really cool to be able to see that. Maybe take a telescope out and you can see both Jupiter, its moons, and Saturn all in the same shot through your telescope. Also, if you wake up before sunrise, which again is pretty easy, it's at 6.43 on Thursday, um, you can see Mercury and Venus right next to the sun where it's going to be rising. And you don't get to see Mercury that often either. So there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. The Leonids um, meteor shower is peaking in November on the 16th, which is coinciding with the new moon. So you'll have a beautiful night around the 15th and the 16th of November to go and see a meteor shower. And I think here in the park is a good place to do that. Yeah, so I will set my alarm and mark my calendar so I don't miss Absolutely. it. All right, so we're going to toss it over to Dave Robinson, who is the fire management officer, and he's going to talk about the fall fire season. We are in our fall fire season. Uh, typically that runs from early to mid-October into about mid to late November until we start to receive um, heavier amounts of precipitation typically associated with the, the onset of winter conditions. Um, our conditions so far are normal. Uh, what does normal really mean to us? Normal means we have um, an opportunity potentially to have fires occur and spread here at the park. Uh, however, we're not anticipating uh, conditions that are going to really cause or result in a catastrophic effects or large fires. Uh, we've had moisture on and off the past couple weeks every few days uh, and we have not had any significant drying trends and we did not start our fallout uh, in a drought type situation. So our fuel moistures, that's a measurement of moisture of how uh, things gain or lose moisture. Obviously the drier fuels uh, typically cause increased fire spread. Uh, the material on the forest floor, the leaves, the branches, twigs, things like that. Um, 
our fuel moistures are normal to slightly above normal. So things are not very dry. And uh, I, I don't anticipate a, a significant cause of alarm for large fires. Campfires are only allowed in those developed designated areas. Those are primarily our campgrounds and our picnic areas. Uh, we urge our visitors, if you're planning to have a campfire, um, make it an appropriate size. Um, only make it as big as you need to be, as you need to have that fire to be to accomplish the task. Um, you might have to extinguish it and leave it rapidly, so proper size is important. Bring supplies and materials to take care of extinguishing your fire. Uh, bring a pail for water or a jug and have a small shovel. Um, when you're going to extinguish that campfire, you want to make sure that you drown it with water, you're going to stir those coals, and you're going to feel it for heat. And do not leave that fire until you no longer feel heat. That means that it's out cold. We had a very active summer uh, regarding supporting regional and national fire operations. From about mid-June, late June, through most recently this past weekend, uh, we've continued to support national operations in the western U.S. Um, here from Shenandoah, we've sent 25 folks out. Just want to let folks know that we are uh, planning on conducting a prescribed fire here at Shenandoah National Park uh, later this fall if uh, conditions are appropriate. Um, we have 40 acres up near Big Meadows at the Big Meadow itself on the eastern side of the meadow that are targeted for a prescribed fire treatment. Uh, this fall or potentially next spring, depending on those conditions. Uh, we utilize fire uh, to restore the health and function of the ecosystem of the meadow itself and, and reduce woody stems. Uh, what we've seen over the years is that uh, briars, locusts, and, and raspberries uh, continually are moving in from that, the edge there along the meadow and uh, actually reducing the native grasses that we historically found in the meadow. And we can utilize a prescribed fire treatment uh, to reduce those woody stems and stimulate the growth of the, the native vegetation and improve the, the forbs and the grasses uh, in the meadow. A uh, fire is very important for that ecosystem. Um, it's, it's a natural disturbance and it creates that nutrient cycling um, to improve the health and function of that ecosystem. Uh, also, we see uh, a reduction in the fuels, uh, and that reduces the threat of an unwanted ignition uh, during warmer, drier times of year uh, when the, the grass ecosystem there could be at threat from a wildland fire. Uh, it's not the only place we conduct prescribed fires. Uh, there's also a place and a time for fire in our wooded ecosystems as well. And uh, we're constantly looking for opportunities to utilize fire as a tool to reduce reduce the threat of a wildland fire in, in those environments and improve the health of the ecosystem in the, in the forested areas of the park as well. Thanks, Dave. It's always great to check in and it's really a good reminder to be safe when, there's a, when you have a fire in the park. Absolutely. So we want to remind you real quick, if you want to get into the park quicker and you can skip some of the lines, the best way to do that is to go to recreation.gov. You can get your pass right there online and it's a much faster way to get into the park and enjoy these beautiful fall days. Yeah, so since we're winding down um, our fall season and heading into the winter season, some of our facilities are closing. Um, one big one, we have Big Meadows Campground still open this weekend. Um, they have first come, first serve sites. If you want to see the remainder of our facilities and areas that are closing, you can check our website. Definitely, we've got a lot of closures that are coming up. You can find them all on our website, like she said. Mm -hmm at uh, plan your visit and then you'll see the operating hours button and it's got everything there that you need to know. Yep. Yeah. And then um, other closings such as Skyline Drive and the event that we have inclement weather, you can call our uh, park number. Yep. And that is 540-999-3500, <laughs> option one, option one. I know you love to say I that. love this one. <laughs> All right, so that's all that we have for this week for you all. Next week, we're going to be talking to Evan Childress, and he is going to tell us what the animals are going to do in the winter. Probably get cold, because that's <laughs> at least what I'm doing. Or eat. That's what I'll be doing. Uh, a little bit of both sounds good. I'm Ranger Scott. And I'm Ranger Alyssa. We will see you next week. Enjoy these pictures that have been taken around the park this week. Yep. Bye. Bye.